Hey, what's up everyone? It's David, and I'm back with another tutorial in Cubase Pro 11. You may notice that I've been absent for a few months, and that's because I sustained an injury to my hand and wrist that left me unable to play guitar, bass guitar, and piano. Now there's an old rock song that says you don't know what you got till it's gone, and in my case, that was especially true. I couldn't wait till I was able to make music again. And with enough swearing and rehabilitation, I am cleared to play for long periods of time and I couldn't be more excited. And as a result, I'm going to do what I was dreaming of all those months I was laid up. I'm going to make an EP from start to finish over the next two months. I'll have it finished by May and up on the streaming services at some time in June. And I'll be making three videos a week to that effect. We'll cover songwriting, composition, production, mixing, mastering, and taking all your songs and getting them up on the streaming services. So if that sounds interesting to you, feel free to subscribe and turn on that notification icon because this is gonna be a fun ride and I think we should take it together. But today, we're gonna to start where I always start when I start a new project, which is with creating a durable template. And today I'll give you five tips on creating a good template in Cubase Pro 11. So let's get into it. Okay, everyone, so we are here in Cubase and I will create a completely empty template to get this party started. Create. Um, I'll put it in my templates folder, I suppose. Okay, first things first, I wanna set this up for broadcasting so I can use this template, but also create YouTube videos. So we'll go to our input output channels and I'll select the E, which allows me to see these. The first thing I like to do is put a brick wall limiter now I will take this off before I do any mix downs, but this is just so I don't br uh, burn out my speakers. And I always have sort of a protection built into the stereo out. Brick wall limiter, post fader at negative three dB. That way the sound never goes above negative three dB. Secondly, I wanna set this up for broadcast. So I will add Rhea stream, which will stream this stereo out channel to my screen recorder. Now, in order to set this up, I do have a custom identifier, and that identifier is Cubase, and I don't want to receive audio, I want to send audio via local broadcast. So now that I'm sending audio via local broadcast, I like to be able to hear myself, just in case I accidentally mute myself and I do a 20, 30 minute video with no audio, that would be no good. Right now I have the microphone turned on in my screen recorder, but I actually like to monitor myself and do it through Cubase. So I will add an audio track. Now I have a hotkey for adding a, modio, a mono audio track, which is Alt-Shift-A. Okay, audio one, we'll call this VO screen recorder. And what I will do is apply a template, a preset to that, which is my voiceover preset. And that's just a studio EQ and a maximizer. It's not the most elegant solution. I also like these to be light blue. So we'll make that light blue. And now I'll monitor it and see if it's working. Hello, hello. It is, so now I can monitor myself through Cubase and I can kill the mic in my screen recorder and I'll just hear everything that's going into the broadcast. So now that we have my voice over talkback channel going and sound coming out of Cubase, we can get to the process of making a template. And tip number one is set up your utility tracks first. I will hide this and hide that because I don't need them anymore. And when I say utility tracks, I, I mean tracks that don't actually have audio in them. And I use three of them. I use a marker track. We'll call this marker. I use a tempo track. And I use a signature track. And I actually like my signature track above my tempo track. And I'll have these be the default color gray, just because they don't need to be fancy. Now, another thing I do is I take these three tracks and I divide them with this little thing right here. So we'll move these here. So they're behind this divider. I want my marker on top. And then I'll move this divider. If I'm changing the signature or the tempo, I know that they live right here and I can activate them. But a lot of times I'll just use track tempo until I feel like there needs to be a tempo change in a song and then I'll activate the tempo track. Okay, so now we have our marker here. What I'll do is I'll add a marker by hitting control one 
to the first. And so now I know that hitting shift one, regardless of where my cursor is, will bring me back to the beginning of the project. And that's nice. Okay, so now that we have our utility track set up, signature, tempo, and marker, it's time to think about the end of the chain, and that's our group tracks. Now I know what I will have. I'll have drums, I'll have bass, I'll have guitar, I'll have miscellaneous instruments, I'll have keys and synths, and then I'll have a mix bus. So I'll need six bus tracks. And so that's my second tip. My first tip is do your utility tracks. My second tip is do your group tracks next. So we'll add group tracks. We'll add six of them. And they'll be stereo group tracks. We'll create them inside a folder. Add track. So we want this to be green. The colors, I don't know what the deal is. Um, so group six will be the mix bus. This will be drums. This will be bass. This will be guitars. This will be vocals. This will be keys slash synth. And I messed up and I need an extra one. I want a miscellaneous, a catch-all, just in case I need, I don't know, uh, something that's not key synth, like strings or woodwinds or horns or something. So I'll add a group track. And we'll call this, we'll have it go to mix bus. And we'll call it misc. And we'll move that here. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is have these all go to the mix bus. So I'll pull up the mixer, put on Q-Link. I'll go drums through miscellaneous. Those will all route to the mix bus. And now the mix bus will route to stereo out. You don't see anything going because I have my voiceover going directly to stereo out, if that makes sense. Okay, we'll close this. And now I wanna color code these. Uh, we'll make this track a different color. And drums, I have drums are, let me, let me do it from the mixer because I'm, I'm having a hard time here. Drums are always red. Bass is always dark blue. Guitars are always light green for me. I mean, you could do it any way you want. Vocals, we'll make vocals purple. Keys and synth, pink. Miscellaneous, um, lighter shade of pink. Teal, and then mix box is always orange. Okay, so I'll use those colors throughout the project. Um, so now that we have our buses set up and they're all going to the mix bus and then the mix bus is going to stereo out, we can start setting up our individual track folders. So we'll go back to the project window, we'll collapse this. Now I want to add a folder track. We'll call this folder track drums. Now if you remember, Drums are red, so I'll color this red as well. And within this folder, I want to add several instruments. I'll add Groove Agent SE. And that will route to drums. And I'll add two of those. These go into the folder. The first one, I'll rename GA Kit. The second one I'll name GA Perk. So I will allow Groove Agent to have a drum kit and a percussion kit. The percussion kit will also be if I use Groove Agent as a sampler. Now there's another instrument I would like to use potentially, so I'll add it, and that's Contact. I have drum sets in Contact that I may like to use. So. Don't be fooled, contact is not the right one. Contact five is the right one, that's the full version. Contact is just the contact player. I'll do two of these as well. And they'll route to drums. And uh, unfortunately, they don't go right into the folder, so you have to pull them in. And I'll call this contact kit. And contact perk. 
And then the final instrument that I may use for drums is East West's play. So we'll add play, two tracks, and we'll call this play kit and play perk. Okay, now we have our drums set up and uh, I don't like to have them loaded necessarily because they load on project load. So what I'll do, and this is my third tip, is disable all of these. So we right click and disable track. And then we load them up as necessary. So next, let's move on to bass. We'll add a new folder track for bass. We'll make it blue, because that's the color of the base group. And for bass, I typically use two audio tracks. One is bass DI, and one is bass amp. Now I will load a bass amp onto here because a lot of times I'll write riffs with bass amps. So it doesn't matter which one we load, but I'll just do VST bass amp. Okay, now these need to route to the bass group. Okay. And once they're routed, I think that's uh, good for bass. Now, if you want a synth bass, I probably won't use it in this project. And that's what I was saying about know your limitations. Don't have the option to just immediately start playing on a synth bass. If you know that for this project, you want to be mostly playing electric bass, set it up just for electric bass. It's easier that way. So this is easy. Oh, and then an, my fourth tip is get your inputs right. And you'll see this with... Uh, the guitars when I do them as well. For the bass, I typically use the right input on my interface. So I'll set that up, same with the guitar. So the next is guitars, and that's very similar to the bass, so we'll do that quickly. So my philosophy with this is I want to have enough tracks to do what I need to. So I give myself two acoustic tracks, two electric rhythm tracks, a lead track, and a solo track. That should be enough, theoretically, for me to get the job done. Um, so once we have those in, we bring back in our mix console and route those all to guitars. And then we also want the right uh, input, and guitars are done. So going through our list, we just have vocals. Now vocals I do a bit differently. So let's get into that. I'll create the tracks I need. Okay, so I've created these. There's a scratch, a lead, and four backups. What I want is the backups to have their own bus because often you handle reverb a bit differently. So the backups, We'll go to the backup uh, group that I've created, group track. And the lead and the scratch vocal, and the scratch vocal many times ends up being the lead, but that'll go to the, the vocal. So the backups actually route out to vocals. So if you're just looking at just your group tracks, so you get rid of your vocals, guitars, bass, input, output. And that's one beauty of doing this so you have access to all of your group tracks and mixing, or you could just look at your bass, or just your guitars, or your vocals. So that's why we do it this way. It's easier at a glance to get whatever you need if you're focusing on a specific part. And we have two left, keys, synth, and miscellaneous. Okay, so I know that the three types of keys that I'll want to use are Piano, Rhodes, and B3. I'll run them all through Contact. So the key is just to make a choice. Just choose one. And you can come back to it later in mixing. 
So I'll choose for piano the Alicia Keys in it. Sounds fine to me. It's this is for tracking. Now, if you want to change the piano sound after the fact, that's one of the beautiful things about using virtual instruments. You can. I'll choose also the Mark I Rhodes. Okay, and then for the B3, I'll also choose the Scarby sample. Now, it's not that I don't have better sample sets. It's that these, they'll work for now, and they're accessible. So tone wheel organ B3. So now we have a piano, a Rhodes, and a B3. And then I want to load all the synths just so that they're there out of touch. So I will reload RetroLog. I'll load Pad Shop. I'll load Massive, and I'll load Reactor. Now that should be enough. Now here's a, a tip number four. I said there's going to be five tips. Especially if you've loaded sample libraries, disable these tracks. So you can right click and disable. I've uh, created a, a hotkey. And so now these are available. If I want a B3, I just click on B3, undisable it, and. But if I disable it, it won't uh, you know, slow down the loading process. So that's keys and synth. Here's miscellaneous. Okay, so I've added three random audio tracks just for additional audio if there's something that I want to add in that's not a guitar or a bass or vocals or drums. And then three romplers, so Helion Sonic SE, Contact and Play. Now we need to make sure these are routed correctly. So if we take a look at these, they're going to stereo out. With Q-Link still on, we choose miscellaneous. And then everything is routed appropriately, except for I'll probably record these with my right input. So we'll get the inputs right. So with effects channels, I usually just do one. Now I can add some later as needed. Like for guitars, if I want to have a universal guitar effects channel where the guitars are being sent to it at different amounts, that's a choice I can make and then have that reroute into the guitar group. Or I could put effects on each individual track or I can put uh, effects on the group track. So here is tip number five. Once you've added everything that you may use, set this up the way you want it to look. So I like my group tracks at the bottom. I like to not even see this, so I'll... So these, I don't want them all out in the open. I also want anything that's not being used right away to be disabled. And this will improve loading times. So everything is disabled. And this is how I want it to look when I open the program. However, I don't want my voiceover to be on. So I'll bring that up. I'll unmonitor that, switch back to the screen recorder audio. And I'm back to the screen recorder audio. I'll hide my voice. I'll bring this down to the bottom so it's easy to find. I'll hide it. And this is what I want it to look like, except for I don't want the visibility tab. I want the inspector tab. So when I click on this, I can easily get to these and start working with them. And that those are my five tips for creating a workable template. Now all we have to do is save it as template. So we go to File, Save as Template. And I will call this my EP Tracking Template. Save. And we close out of the program. We open up Cubase again. And there it is. The EP tracking template is ready for use and it's ready for creating this EP and making a bunch of videos and music for you all and for myself. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, everyone. If you have, feel free to like or subscribe and take care of yourselves, everyone. Peace.